Hey everyone, and welcome to another video. My name is Simon Dantremont. I'm a professional wildlife photographer in Eastern Canada. You know how they say, if you love what you do, you'll never work another day. Well, that's what I'm gonna be talking about. I'm gonna be talking about how to monetize, that is, how to make money out of your wildlife photography. Make sure you watch till the end. At the end of this video, I'm gonna show you my photos that have sold the best. I'm gonna tell you why, and I'm gonna give you the three key criteria that I apply and that you should apply to your photography to make sure you go out and actually take photos that will sell well. Wouldn't it be great if every time you went out and took some photos, took a great photo and you thought, this will be a photo that sells and have an opportunity to make money and make a business and even someday perhaps become a professional wildlife photographer. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So I've developed a six step plan to help you monetize your wildlife photography. So let's talk about step number one. The first step is to develop your craft. That is, you have to become a good wildlife photographer. How tall you can build a building depends on how well the foundation is built. The same thing is true for wildlife photography. You need to develop good field craft. You need to know your gear. You need to build up an inventory of good equipment. You need to know that equipment. And as you do this over a few years, it actually gets easier and you actually get better because you compound knowledge year after year about what type of game to find in what area, in what season, in what weather, and as you continue to do this, every year you build upon your knowledge and you actually get better at finding game and being in the right place at the right time to take great photos. So this is something you just need to put in the time. You need to get good and you need to get to the point where you're not thinking about your gear every time you're going out. The gear is just a tool. You're thinking about composition. You're thinking about finding game. You're thinking about getting the shot, getting in the right location to be the right place at the right time. Different seasons will bring different game to different areas and different opportunities. You need to go through this cycle a few times to be able to learn where the great place is going to be for what type of game. I have some locations now that I go to year after year at the same place at the same season because I know what species I'm going to find. And through trial and error, I've learned the types of scenarios and setups that I need to be in and be ready for to get the types of shots I want on a consistent basis. If you put in the time, you'll also be able to develop this expertise and you'll get better and better every year you do this. Step number two, after you develop your craft, is to become known. It's time to start building your reputation. You need to get out there and you need to show your photos to people who can appreciate them. So this is the time to start working on social media networks, Facebook, Instagram, Vero is becoming very popular. Some people are even trying TikTok to popularize their wildlife photography. Depends what style of photography you want to do and who you think your target market is, but this is the time to get known. Social media is a great tool to get known first amongst your circle of friends and then use the circle of friends as influence to get to know their friends and for them to get to know your photography. This is a great time to start building your website. Many online tools allow you to build your own website. I built my website in a day and I was able to populate it with products and photos in a second day. So this is only a one weekend project to build yourself a website. It's not too expensive and not too difficult. There's lots of great tools out there. You can go out and build yourself a website to start building a presence. One thing about building a website you should keep in mind, pick a website provider that later on, if you want to commercialize your prints by selling prints online, you can do it on the same website that you've developed. It's much easier to add online capability to your existing website than start from scratch. If you pick a website provider that's not well equipped for online sales and you want to add online sales later, you'll have to change to a different provider and maybe design a new website. So look at commercialization early on to see whether or not the website provider you're picking to start off with can eventually be responsible for some of your online sales activity. So populate your website with your best photos, start building your portfolio. That way you start getting known for not just one photo, but all your photos. Step number three is to translate your presence into recognition. It's time for people to start recognizing your work and for you to start getting out there more than just having a social media presence. It's time to engage with your audience. If local media start reaching out to you, like TV appearances, I've been on all three of the major television networks in my region in the last few years. I've been in the main newspaper in my province as well. I've been on podcasts, local newspapers, radio stations. Eventually, local photo clubs will start asking you to go do presentations to their clubs and to their members. This is something you probably want to do for free at the beginning, but eventually you can start charging for this as a service, which is another way of commercializing your wildlife photography. 
the two signs that you're making progress on this step is when you hear people say, I knew it was your photo even before I saw your name, and I love your work. The first one is that you've developed a recognized style. People look at your photos and they look and see your style in the photo before they know it's yours. That means you're starting to develop a style across your portfolio that's recognizable. This is a very good thing. Some people think that having a look across their photos is a bad thing, but someone else suggested that Michelangelo had a look and that was never a problem. And the other comment is, I love your work. That means that you're not being recognized just for one photo, but the ensemble of all your photos is called your work. When people are talking about your work, it means you're really making progress here. The next step, step number four, can be developed concurrently with step number three, and this is to develop your suite of products. Now, why do I call it a suite? Think of your revenue as a wildlife photographer as a pie chart with different areas bringing in different amounts of revenue. Very few wildlife photographers make an entire living off of one type of product. I actually propose you start small here when it comes to selling products. And take little test runs in new product styles a little bit at a time. There's lots of things to learn here in terms of taking care of delivery, quality control, shipping rates, how to ship products safely, how to send e-invoices, how to use PayPal. All these things have a little bit of a learning curve and it's great if you can just learn it on a small scale. So some of the easiest products to get into right off the bat would be a calendar, for example. You can find lots of online tools to make calendars. You can start selling these to friends and family and you can promote these through your own social media networks. You don't need to buy any advertising. Starting off a calendar in your first year and selling a few dozen here and there, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that and just as a way to start getting into the business and starting to learn the business as well. There's also prints, of course. Now you can print your own at home or you can use a commercial print shop to do a larger. Once you start getting a reputation, you develop some other products that you can sell. One of them is your time and custom jobs. More and more, I'm starting to get emails and phone calls as referrals from other people who are looking for my expertise to buy on a custom basis either for photography or videography. For example, I'm working on a nature documentary right now where I'm going out and filming wildlife and birds as well as shooting some drone footage. If you're an extrovert and someone who really likes engaging with other people, don't forget to sell yourself as a product. Speaking engagements, product sponsorships, these are things where people are not buying your photos, but they're buying you. And you are a product that's part of your suite of tools. Another way to sell your photos is through stock agencies, where you load your photos to these agencies who resell your photos and give you a small commission. At this point in the industry, it doesn't seem that this is a great revenue generator for most people because you only get very small amounts for your photos. Other ways that wildlife photographers make money, for example, would be to sell to magazines and also to write articles for magazines. If you can provide the photos and the text, that's a great all-in-one solution for a magazine, either online or a print edition. And as you get more reputation, you can start writing your own books and giving tours in one-on-one -on -one sessions. Step number five is to scale up. That is just increase the volume of everything as much as you can or want to on weekends, evenings, vacation times, this is the time to grow your business, grow your reputation, keep selling more and more, get more connections, get more referrals, or scale it up to the point where ready you want to keep it at a steady state and continue to do this as a sideline, or whether or not you're ready to move to step number six. Step number six, if someone really wants it, is to transition to wildlife photography full time. And by the way, no one stops an old job and becomes a wildlife photographer starting in the field for the first time in day one and becoming a professional wildlife photographer. It just doesn't happen that way. It takes years and years of expertise, building up the reputation, the following, the quality of work, the portfolio, the connections. These all take time. Everyone who's a professional wildlife photographer pretty well has scaled this up on the side to a point where they felt ready transitioning from an old career to a new career. This may be something you're not interested in doing. You may want to scale it up to a certain point. You're getting a certain level of income, manageable within your current job, and your current lifestyle, and you want to keep it that way. That's 100% great. At that point, you can start becoming pickier and pickier what kind of business you do, and you'll be able to evaluate how much time for which part of my pie chart am I willing to commit. And I promised you a tip. You need to take photos that sell. Not every type of photo will sell. I'm gonna show you now some of my top selling photos and now I'm gonna share the secrets on why these are good sellers.
In my experience, the best-selling nature and wildlife photos will have one of three attributes. The first type of photo that sells are artful. That's right, they look like art. They're very pretty. They have good composition. They have tricks with light. They have tricks with angles. They look nice. They have a good composition. They have leading lines. They have the types of attributes that look artful. This fox image, for example, is one of my best-selling images. It has a unique look. It has nice light. It's well composed, catches your attention. This is a type of photo that sells really well. And it's of game that's very popular and cute, let's say, foxes are. So this photo sells very well for me. This bald eagle in the snow, for example, is also a good seller. It has a nice composition, it has some action, it has some environment. It looks like art as opposed to just being a snapshot. This photo of two bohemian wax wings looks very artful. Nice composition, nice environment, nice background, nice light. This photo sells really well for me. The next type of photo that sells really well is a photo with a sense of place. Now, what's a sense of place? I'll give you this example outside of wildlife photography. Let's say you're a sports photographer at the Olympics. You're hoping to be on the front page of Sports Illustrated and you're photographing gymnastics. You take a wonderful photo of a gymnast flying in the air, doing all kinds of loops. Someone is off 30 feet to your right and has the same photo as you, but they position themselves so that the Olympic rings are behind the gymnast. When both of those photos show up to the editor of Sports Illustrated, the editor will pick the photo with the Olympic rings in the background every time over your photo. It's instantly recognizable as to where it was shot. People, when they buy photos of nature, like to have mementos of home, or if they're away from home, they like to have reminders of home. So for example, this photo of a Milky Way over this oak tree. This tree is one of the most famous trees in Nova Scotia. It's in a big open field by the highway. Everyone knows this tree. Everyone says, that's my favorite tree. I got a beautiful Milky Way over this tree. This has been one of my top sellers because it has a sense of place. People know that this is the tree by the side of the highway and they buy it because it's recognizable. Here's another one of my top sellers. This is Peggy's Cove Lighthouse, one of the most famous lighthouses in Nova Scotia in Eastern Canada where I live. And I got a very unique photo of it with a sun star as the sun was setting, really underexposed it as I was trying to take bracketed shots, but the underexposed version looks great. So because this photo has a sense of place, people recognize it where it is, this is one of my best selling photos. Now some of you may be saying, well that's fine for landscapes, but you can't take wildlife photos with a sense of place. I'll have to disagree. Look at these two photos of a snowy owl. They're both great photos. They both look great. But the one on the left is on a lobster pot by the ocean. I live by the ocean and people here want to be reminded that they live by the ocean or if they're away from home, want reminders of the ocean. Because I live near the ocean, the photo of the snowy owl on the lobster pot in front of a wave and the ocean will be a better seller long term than the other photo, even though technically the other photo might even be prettier. The third type of photo that sells well is the unique photo. That is the wow factor photo. That's the photo where people say, wow, that is really neat and that is cool. This photo here of a red-winged blackbird's breath is also another example of a unique photo. When people see that, they know they're seeing something unique, they know they're seeing something they don't see every day, and it really looks good captured in a photo. And here's another example of a unique photo this common loon flipping a green crab. Just the fact that I've caught that action gives it a very unique look. People know it's just not a snapshot of wildlife. They know I've captured a moment and it's worth printing. I really try hard to answer all the questions in the comments below. So if you've got a question left after watching this video, please put it in the comments. I'll really try to get to it. Let me know what product you're gonna to try to develop first. I'd love to see and I think the viewers would love to know what other people are doing. Go out and do it yourself.